Gospel of Chinano. Today is Wednesday, August 10th, 2016. If you want to follow us on Twitter, please go to CADEX TV. Yesterday, the American presidential race took yet another unusual turn. The Republican candidate, Donald Trump, appeared to be advocating actual assassination of Hillary Clinton in the event that she won and began to appoint Supreme Court judges who were unfavorably disposed toward uh, maintaining the Second Amendment. A very unusual commentary. Mr. Trump seemed to be unaware of the fact that amendments can only be removed by a constitutional voting process involving all 50 states. Nevertheless, his comments have prompted yet another firestorm over his unusual behavior, to put it mildly. Meanwhile, there was a 5.1 magnitude earthquake about 130 miles north of the San Francisco Bay Area yesterday. The quake struck near Upper Lake, California at about 8 p.m. Pacific time last night. It was followed by aftershocks, two of them a 3.0 and a 2.7 magnitude on the Richter scale. There were no reports of any damage or injuries, but just quite a bit of shaking. A federal jury in California yesterday found the uh, state's major utility company, Pacific Gas and Electric, guilty of safety violations, criminal violations, of the 2010 gas pipeline explosion that killed eight people and destroyed a neighborhood in a San Francisco suburb of San Bruno, just south of the city. PG&E had faced 12 criminal charges of negligence and obstruction of an investigation into the pipeline explosion. The jury found the company guilty of five counts of safety violations and one count of obstruction. The company was found not guilty on the remaining counts. PG&E has already paid more than $1.7 billion in fines and restitution for the September 2010 explosion. The section of the pipeline that exploded was installed about 60 years ago. The National Transportation Safety Board found that the rupture had occurred in a spot where workers had installed substandard pipes back in 1956. During the trial, prosecutors said that PG&E had uh, obstructed the investigation by providing insufficient data and by pre-interviewing witnesses. Records entered as evidence at the trial showed that the utility had cut its budget for pipeline inspection by 26% in 2009, the year before the explosion. PG&E argued that the prosecution was relying on, quote, sound bites about corporate greed and that there was no evidence that records were intentionally destroyed. In addition to killing eight people, the explosion injured 58 people, destroyed 38 homes completely, and damaged 70 others. There was a fire yesterday morning on the 12th floor of the Continental Bank building right next to the New York Stock Exchange on Wall Street in New York City. Three people were injured, one of them was seriously injured. The fire broke out just before 10 a.m. in a 46-story building. Uh, about 90 firefighters were dispatched to the building. The uh, building had a sprinkler system, which did in fact knock down the fire, but there remained heavy smoke conditions throughout uh, the 12th, 13th, and 14th floors of the building. According to uh, reports, a number of people, if not the whole building, were evacuated due to the fire. Two big Japanese insurers are reporting their uh, results from uh, the period involving the April Kumamoto earthquakes. Sampo Japan has booked a $403 million loss up front from the Kumamoto earthquake. Um, residential claims from the earthquake are picked up by the Japanese government's insurance scheme, leaving insurers in Japan um, with the commercial loss responsibility. Overall, Sampo's domestic non-life business did generate a core underwriting profit of about 45 billion yen. Its rival, Tokyo Marine, incurred cat losses of about $138 million as a result of the earthquake. Uh, they also did produce an overall underwriting profit of a little bit over 11 billion yen for the period. Delta Airlines yesterday said that the internal problem uh, that caused that the problem that caused the flight disruptions on Monday, which uh, canceled over a thousand flights, was an internal problem and not due to the loss of power from a local utility. Delta initially pointed to a loss of electricity from Georgia Power and Light, which serves its Atlanta hub. However, uh, yesterday the company said that what happened was 
the Delta computers that control everything from reservations and boarding passes to crew and gate assignments toppled like a row of dominoes when one thing went wrong early Monday morning. A power control module malfunctioned, causing a surge that cut off power to the airline's main network. When that happens, the system is designed to switch in the blink of an eye to computer backup systems. However, on Monday, that switch did not kick in. The Delta computer meltdown was at least the third occasion in about a year when airline computer malfunctions have caused numerous flights to be canceled. Southwest passengers uh, encountered delays last month when a computer glitch occurred and United Airlines experienced similar problems last summer. A major forest fire on Portugal's Madeira Islands has forced more than 400 people to flee their homes. About 175 people have been treated at local hospitals. According to the uh, Portuguese National Civil Protection Service, some 2,000 firefighters are in action tackling the forest fires. Madeira is uh, about 250 miles north of Tenerife in the Canary Islands. It's one of the outermost regions of the European Union. Saudi Arabia continues to pump oil despite the worldwide oil glut. The country's oil output hit an all-time high in July. The uh, country produced uh, a record 10.67 million barrels a day. Uh, this is higher than its previous record of last year of 10.56 million barrels a day. Saudi Arabia uses about 900,000 barrels a day during the summer months for its own internal electricity production. The kingdom continues to output, uh, to increase its output as it competes for market share with a host of rivals, including the newly resurgent Iran, which is now back in the global oil market. OPEC controls about a third of the world's oil supply and uh, is now up to about 33.11 million barrels a day collectively for all of its members. They're uh, predicting that uh, demand globally is still expected to reach a, thir uh, a shade under 32 million barrels a day. So that's going to be about a 1.2 million barrel a day uh, surplus multiplied by 30. That's over 30 million barrels extra per month, which is, of course, going to contribute to the worldwide oil glut. The Saudis have apparently made a decision to maintain their market share at the expense of uh, decreasing prices. That's the news for today. If we have any breaking news, we'll come back and tell you. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you tomorrow.